Hey guys, welcome back to Records Rebuilds. Today we're working on a 2002 Chevy Camaro. This is a V6, 3800 here. Uh, obviously not as desirable as the V8, but this car has a special spot in my heart. Uh, it was my first car. Uh, it's 23 years old now, uh, but it still looks pretty nice. And I, you know, it just brings back a lot of memories when I drive it. Um, it's not the fastest thing in the world. Um, it is a five speed, so that's kind of fun. Um, but uh, today we're here to replace a fuel pressure regulator. Now, before I get into what you need to do to replace that regulator, I want to talk a little bit about diagnosing it. And I'm going to do another video that you'll see um, later on diagnosing a rich fuel condition which is what this car had. I was getting codes for a rich fuel condition along with a lot of other codes on it. Now, uh, there was a bunch of codes that led me first to think I had an ECM problem. I think when you get a bunch of fuel codes, especially with a rich fuel condition, O2 sensors, that sort of stuff, the first thing always to do is clean your mass airflow sensor. Now, when I clean my mass airflow sensor, which is right here, all you have to do is pull this off pull it out and, and clean it. But there's also a, inside of the, this uh, uh, throttle body, or right before the throttle body rather, there's a screen. You pull it out with a snap ring pliers. There's a snap ring around it. Uh, pull that out. There's fuel all inside my intake and inside my intake manifold. Guys, if your car is running rich and you've got fuel up there, I'm telling you right now, I know what the problem is, probably the fuel pressure regulator. Now, let me just tell you why. The fuel pressure regulator is back here. It's that gold thing back there. I don't, can you see that? I'm gonna leave it there for a second. It's, it's right there. It's way back on the driver's side at the very back near the firewall of the uh, intake manifold. Uh, on the opposite side is your mass, uh, your manifold absolute pressure sensor, excuse me, the MAP sensor. That's right here. That sensor is connected through a port that, that runs into the back of the intake manifold. Now, if you really look closely, you'll see that that fuel pressure regulator is op operated via a, a vacuum hose to it. It runs over there to that. So running through basically the intake manifold and it's running over to here. Now, why does that matter? Well, that fuel pressure regulator has a rip in it and it's allowing fuel to run through that vacuum hose and straight into the intake. The engine's rich and can't can't trim anything back. It can't, it's trying as hard as it can to trim back the fuel, but it's not working because of fuel coming in straight through the intake where fuel should never be, and it's then getting into the cylinders and uh, you're getting a rich condition. And uh, then it kicks off all the other codes because all the, the rich condition can affect a lot of different things. O2 sensor uh, sees that there's uh, the, the exhaust mixture is not right. There's too much fuel in the exhaust, all sorts of things. You can smell it everywhere. You can tell it's wrong. This car would not hardly idle. When you, when you ran it hard, um, the so the engine speed was moving fast enough, it was burning up all the fuel. So when you ran this car hard, it was fine. But if you try to get it to idle, it was very hard to get it to idle. Sometimes it still would. Sometimes it'd run like shit. It, it sort of depended on how it was uh, parked on incline. I'll also say, when you hit the brakes hard, it would kill the engine. Well, that didn't make any sense to me until I saw fuel in the intake manifold hit the brakes hard, it was running the fuel up and into the cylinders faster and flooding them, killing the engine. Um, if you drove the car, parked it, hopped right back in it, tried to start it up, it would take forever because the engine's flooded from too much fuel in it. If you let it sit a long time, it would usually fire up pretty quickly because all that fuel had evaporated. So anyway, the, the point is, is that the fuel in the intake manifold was causing the rich condition and all that I had to do was fi to fix it was replace that um, that fuel pressure regulator. Here is the old one. You can see this is where the vacuum hose hooks on and goes over to the other side. You can also see how tough it is. 
that is the fuel rail actually you're seeing back there, the gold part. Into the back of that from the firewall, from the firewall coming towards me is how you have to insert this fuel pressure regulator. There's a snap ring that goes and covers the back side of this. So to get this off, you either have to be a, mu a magician, get your arm back there with maybe a mirror and some snap ring pliers and pop it out and stick a new one in. I don't really think that's possible. So what you have to do instead is you have to pull the fuel rail off. So it makes a job that, you know, had they put that fuel pressure regulator right up here, this would be a three second job. Instead, because we have to pull the fuel uh, pressure, excuse me, because we have to pull the fuel rail off, it takes a while. And that is mostly because of the design of this engine and this car. They wanted the big sloping raking body on this thing. The engine's way back there as a result. And it, uh, it makes getting back there to the fuel pressure regulator pretty tough. So anyway, to do this job, you don't have to be a genius there's only a handful of bolts you just hit to finagle with things because there's not a lot of space um, but to start what you'll do is you'll start with the coils over here you'll take the spark plug wires off of these coils all six of them pull them off then there's two bolts on the inside of this rail and one bolt right over here on the inside of or on the outside of the rail see if you can see it there yeah kind of right there you can get to it through um, this bracket. There's a hole in it that allows you to get to it. Once you get those bolts off, you just slide this um, coil pack to the side. You don't have to unhook the coil pack from the car or the alternator um, or the battery. I will say that before you start this, you should disconnect your negative terminal on your battery. That's for two reasons. One, you're messing with the spark on this car. Um, messing with those coils and with the spark plugs um, if you got grounded out, it would be a problem. It could it could really uh, give you a good shock. But two, you're going to pull the fuel system off. And if someone were to get in the car, foot, turn the key just to the on position, uh, it would spray fuel everywhere. Not even you. You just had to turn the key to on and not even uh, crank the engine. It would spray it everywhere. So uh, you want to unhook the battery. Long story short. Anyway, so once you've got the coil to the side, you're going to pull the fuel system apart here. Um, or you're going to disconnect the fuel rail. To do that, you first want to disconnect pressure on the fuel rail, or it will shoot fuel everywhere as you're doing it. So this is a Schrader valve. Pull the green cap off and use a key to press down on the Schrader valve, and that will allow the fuel uh, pressure to bleed off. These are clips. They're safety clips. You can just pop them right off this way. One, two... Uh, and then you'll need to get a uh, fuel line disconnect tool. They look like this. There's also ones that look a little different than this. You need a 3 8 inch size. Then you take this and put it around the fuel rail here. Uh, well, you can see that. You put it around like this, and you push in on this part. It depresses some springs in there, and the fuel rail just pops off. You do it on both sides, it's pretty easy. You'll know when you have it. There's there's no missing it, it'll just pop right off. Then on each side of the fuel rail, there are just two bolts. One here and one a little further back, one, two. Um, well, you, you'll probably have to move some of this wiring out of the way to see them. Same thing with the other side. There's some wiring that you'll have to move out of the way. Um, but once you do that, you take those two bolts off and now you can pull the fuel rail out. When you pull the fuel rail out, it will pull the fuel injectors out. So you have six fuel injectors that come with it. It, it may take a little back and forth and pulling up and down. You can't really break it. Um, I suppose you could, but you're not going to have a problem breaking it. Uh, the hardest thing will getting enough force to pull it out because you're just, I mean, the car is so, you're so far from those the engine. So you're really at an awkward angle pulling up on this. A um, couple more things here. Uh, one is that I thought you were going to have to pull this alternator off to get the fuel rail out because there just isn't any space. I mean, look at that. I don't even have big hands. Look at that. I was able to do it without. I did have to disconnect one fuel injector over here. There are clips. You can see the clip right there, that silver deal. Um, there's a clip that holds each fuel injector on. And all you have to do is use a screwdriver to pop it off. Um, 
it's not very hard. I would only pop off the front one, this one right here, because if you pop off all those back ones, they're way far back there. It's awkward angle and you'll probably lose the clips to the back of the engine. It'll be sitting somewhere on top of the transmission or whatnot. So um, pop those off, uh, excuse me, pop the one off for the front. That will, you'll have to do that to get the clearance to get over this alternator. I actually think maybe if you pull the alternator off, and leave that inject you could leave that injector on and take it all out together pull them all out um pull the fuel rail out there's again and not a lot of room in there um oh one more thing the map sensor the little cradle back here uh you'll have to pull that off because the fuel rail um wraps around the back of the intake manifold and you've got to pull it straight up uh back here so to do that you'll have to pull this cradle that holds the a map sensor. These are T26, excuse me, T27 screws. Uh, use a ratchet. It's way too far back there to use a, a driver, um, socket driver or whatnot. So a ratchet is much easier. Um, once you've got that off, you can pull straight up and sort of lift it over. There's, yeah, it'll probably end up in a bit of a bind and so you have to kind of work it out. The fuel rail comes out literally though, once you've got it out, all you do is pull a snap ring plier, uh, use a snap ring plier to pull a snap ring out, um, and you'll pull the fuel regulator out. You want to make sure all the pieces come out with it, uh, including there is a rubber gasket there and a rubber gasket here. You need all of them to come out or the new one won't go in very well. Then you'll put it back in with your tube sticking this direction so that it can easily hook up to that uh, um, vacuum hose or tube. And you'll stick it back in there and put the new snap ring on it. Um, oil these seals. Always oil your seals. Uh, it's an engine. Put the oil on there. So put a little oil on there. It really helps things seal when you do that. So put oil on there before you stick it back in. Um, once you've got it in there, you're just going in reverse. You're sticking. You're bringing the fuel rail back in. You're sticking it down in. You're, you're fitting those injectors, all six of them, into their holes. Um, I would say that uh, before you do that, maybe use some carburetor cleaner to clean the injectors. I don't know, maybe you don't have to, but mine had a tiny bit of carbon on it. They really weren't that bad though. I'd also say check all the O-rings. I didn't have to replace any of mine, but I did buy some just in case I ripped one. They're quite substantial O-rings, so uh, mine were fine. Uh, you may have a problem though, you may rip one and then, and then you'll have some to replace it with. Oil these O-rings too. Um, oil the old ones so that you get a good seal when you stick those injectors back in there. Um, once you've got those injectors lined back up, you can push them a little bit, but after that, you'll stick those four bolts in. One, two, and one, two, and tighten them down, and that'll push the injectors back and seat them exactly where they should be. Um, from there, you've got the hardest part over. All you're doing is now clicking your fuel lines back up. One, two. Um, and then you're moving your coil pack back and that rail that it sits on back to the left here and putting the three bolts in, hooking your spark plug wires back up. And, and that's it. The job is done. Now all you have to do is test it. So when you test it, I mean, you're going to hook your battery back up at this point, uh, the negative terminal back up. When you test it, make sure... Uh, one, that you don't just, I, I would say don't just fire your car right up. Turn it to the on position. Turn the key to the on position. And just see what the fuel pump does with no spark. And see if it uh, sprays any fuel out under here. You'll notice it. You'll see it or smell it. You bring a flashlight, look around. Um, I would say keep your fire extinguisher near, just in case. It's a safety thing, but I had zero problems. I don't think you will either. But be safe when you're doing this. After you've tested, you, you're pretty sure there's no fuel leaks. Hop in the car, start it up, and, and come back around and look again. Um, my guess is the first time you do this, uh, the car will still have a little extra fuel in there. And so it might take, uh, you know, 15, 20, 30 seconds before it really feels like it's running good. Mine now starts up perfectly every time like it was a brand new car, though. Um and uh, it's not running uh, it's not running uh, rich anymore. 
I watch the fuel trims on my OBD2 readers and they go from like 0 to 10 now. We're never getting anywhere close to 25, which is the max trim the computer can give the engine. It can go it can go up, it can enrich by 25 or it can go lean by 25%. And mine's doing uh, 0 to 10% either way right now. The car's running good. Feels like it did when it was new. I can say that because I've owned this car since it was new. Um, and uh, it, it it's really a great feeling uh, when you got an old car that is working and running good again like this one is. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the uh, chat. Uh, oh, the fuel pressure regulator that I bought was the Delphi. Uh, I always like Delphi or Delco products. It seemed to work well. This one was the Delphi. I think there was also a Delco branded one. There's a whole bunch you can buy, actually. Um, but mine was Delphi, and it seems to work well. It seemed to fit really well. So uh, I'll put that part number in the comments. Otherwise, uh, good luck with your project. And uh, thank you for watching and listening. And uh, hit like or subscribe if you enjoyed it.